Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernardo from the BTN, and yes, another video request. I love these video requests because it just allows me to uh, uh, have those one-on-one -on -one, uh, kind of connections with you guys because you guys want me to do a video for you for you for your job, or you want to learn something, or you saw something and you want me to explain it more. So today is all about Radius, how to configure Radius within your Server 2008. Uh, I believe I'm running server 2008 R2 within my virtual machine environment. And I, I believe the partic this particular person wanted me to uh, do a Radius server using 802.1 wireless configuration. I'm actually going to break this down to four parts uh, because it's a pretty long and pretty like dry uh, video series. And I don't want to do everything like a 20 minute video. So it's kind of dry and long, right? So in part one, I'm going to show you guys how to do the CA or the and also in configure and install the MPS. Uh, so the CA is your certified authority and your MPS is your network policy server. So let's get started. So the first thing that you guys want to do is you want to open up your server manager and within your server manager, you want to go to roles and you want to add a new role. Uh, again, I'm doing everything on the Active Directory. A lot of people, I've seen a lot of people in a lot of companies uh, or a lot of technicians, they like to install the Radius within the Active Directory. It's really up to you. Uh, I can't really tell you what's best practice. I think the last time that I did configure a Radius server was when uh, I was trying to configure wireless access points. Uh, I forgot the name of the of the company and they in the access points we had to do like a radius server so from here you want to do next and from here you want to do is pick your active directory certificate services and also pick network policy and access services and hit next uh, read all the information if you want uh, you got additional information if you click on these it will give you detailed information on what you need to do or what's what uh, again, MPA will be your network access protection. Uh, so that's what we need. So we're going to do next. And from here, uh, what you want to do is you want to choose your network policy server. And it, this is really optional. So this is really up to you what you want. I normally like to do the routing and remote access services and just have everything by default. And also, I like to do the host credential authentication protocol. So I'm going to click on that. Uh, again, to use this particular role feature or this role service, you're going to be needing other protocols or other services. So just click add, add all the required role services and just hit next. Now, when you get up to this point, what you want to do is you create a self-signed certificate for SSL encryption. So that's what I normally pick. So I'm going to hit next on that. So when you get to this point, up, you know, you can read all this information. It's really up to you. I'm going to hit next. Uh, next thing that you want to do is you want to pick certification authority and hit next and We're doing it on an enterprise level, you know select this option if the CA your certified authority is a member of the domain and Can use director service to issue and manage certificates. That's what what you want So we're gonna hit next now to the point of your CA type the CA type that we want to do is a root CA Okay this option if you're installing the first or only certification authority in a public key infrastructure so that's what we want we're not doing a sub RNA of a CA uh, so we're gonna get uh, we're gonna just leave root CA and we're gonna hit next and then for here we want to create a new private key so we're gonna hit next on that one and uh, up to this portion right here just leave everything as default it's really up to you if you want to change the key character length the highest that you get is 4096 I'm gonna leave it as 2048 uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave the CA the CSP which is the crypto the cryptographic service provider I'm gonna leave it as the default I'm not gonna change that and I'm gonna leave everything as is so I'm gonna hit next right here I'm gonna leave everything alone hit next and depending on how long you want to validate the period for the certificate to generate the CA by default is five years so I'm gonna leave it for five years now I hit next you can actually increase that if you want and we're gonna hit next uh, web services again. If you have picked the option for the web services, hit next on that. Uh, everything is default. I'm gonna leave everything as default, so I'm not gonna pick anything. You probably want the IS management console. It's really up to you uh, if you want to get into uh, managing that stuff. ASP.NET. If you want to do that, I'm just gonna leave everything as default. Hit next, and it gives you a nice little confirmation of what's gonna happen. I have a warning, and the warning is the name of 
The name and the domain settings of the computer cannot be changed after the certification authority has been installed. So you have to make sure everything is the way you want it. If not, you're going to have problems. So uh, I, I'm for sure. Let's hit install. And that's, that's about it. That's about it, guys. That is how you install your CA, which is your... Uh, your certificate authority as well as your NPS, your network protection services. That's how you install it. Now this is on the rows. I think on part two, I'm gonna show you guys how to configure your CA and also configure your NPS and start uh, messing around with other stuff. Again, I'm breaking it down into uh, four parts and this is one of four. If you have any questions, leave them at the bottom of the comment section. And I'll catch you guys on the next, uh, I think part two or four. Peace out.